Hello once again, and if you don't know already, I'm Scott Florence, and just now I'm going to be talking to you about some of the latest science news, more specifically a Higgs boson factory, a space-time crystal, and a new observation from around Pluto. Now since so many of you are new, I'm going to quickly talk about what this channel is. Now basically I upload videos either explaining physics or explaining the news in physics at least once a week, but I'm currently trying to do two a week, although that's not happened this week. And I try to completely remove myself from the videos and just give you all the facts that's needed without you having to bother about my opinion so that you can just formulate them for yourself and so that it's just an endless stream of facts although I have had a request for my opinions in the past so that may happen in the future but for this video I'm going to be trying to slow down my talking a bit because quite a lot of people found that I was talking a bit too quickly in the last one now to start off the news about Pluto and as we all know Pluto used to be considered a planet, but now it's just a dwarf planet because it turned out that there were many large objects in the Kuiper Belt, including Pluto. And the new observation has been a moon that's orbiting around Pluto, and that will be the fifth moon around Pluto that has been observed. And although not much is known about these moons, and even Pluto itself at the moment, it's hoped that in the future these moons will help us to understand the formation of Pluto and the surrounding objects. Now there's an unmanned NASA spacecraft that's headed over to Pluto and that is called New Horizons and it's expected to reach Pluto by about 2015 in order to get the first ever detailed images of Pluto. The Higgs boson factory, now that a boson has definitely been found and it's got properties that seem to be similar to what the Higgs boson is predicted to be, has been discovered from the Large Hadron Collider. Physicists are now wanting to find out more details about the properties of this boson to find out if it really is the Higgs boson and if it really is, if the properties of this Higgs boson are exactly as expected from the standard model of particle physics or if they are slightly different, hopefully in a way that will point towards a unification of quantum theory and relativity. Now one way that you could continue to look at this boson is by continuing to try and make it in the Large Hadron Collider, which would be easier now that we know what the energy range is. However, the issue with that is that at the Large Hadron Collider, they collide protons. Now the problem with using the Large Hadron Collider using protons to make the Higgs boson is that protons are made up of three quarks. And when you collide two protons together, there's a huge amount of extra stuff that you don't want to be looking at other than the Higgs boson that's formed, meaning it's not as easy to analyze what the properties of the Higgs boson are. Now, a new idea has been formulated that instead of using protons to use muons or muons, however you want to pronounce it, and to have those collide, although sadly that cannot be done in the Large Hadron Collider, so a new collider would have to be built. And if you don't know what a muon is, is it's a particle that's very similar to an electron, only it's much more massive. And if you want to know more about that stuff, I've made a video about what quarks and leptons are, which is in the description and also linked to here in this annotation. And now the current idea is that if you were able to collide a muon anti muon pair, with each of them individually having a total energy including mass of just over 60 giga electron volts, you'd be able to much more reliably make Higgs bosons. And now you may be thinking, why didn't they do this while making the Higgs boson, presuming that is what they have found, is because they didn't know what mass this boson was going to be, so they had to go through a huge range of different masses before finally finding it at about 125 giga electron volts. So basically this idea would be able to much more reliably make this boson and have it much more easily analyzed. Okay, so now space-time crystals. Now we know that normal crystals tend to repeat their structure in space and they like to be in the lowest energy state and they have this repeating structure which can be said to be periodic. Now there's Frank Wilczek who originally thought that perhaps crystals could be in a repeating structure in time rather than just in space. And he proposed a way that this could be done, but since then it's been too complicated to do. Now when you hear the term of space-time crystal, you're probably thinking something along the lines of relativity. But sadly, that's not really what this applies to. What a space-time crystal would be is basically a rotating structure. And the new way that's been proposed that this could be made, which is more plausible, was proposed by a team of American and Chinese physicists who released a paper, which is in the description down below if you want to see more about it. What they've basically proposed that could be done is by basically having a better ion trap and forcing the ions into a ring with a slight magnetic field imposed upon it and 
it being at a very low temperature, close to absolute zero. And because of a complete lack of resistance, that these ions would be rotating around the ring indefinitely. So they would be showing perpetual motion. However, this would not be a way of having infinite energy by having a perpetual motion machine. Because they were quick to point out that energy would not be able to be removed from this. However, the energy would be required to be put in in order to stop the ions from moving. But the use for this is not only the fact that this is the closest that we would be able to come to a perpetual motion machine in our current state of knowledge, but also that it would be helpful for researching symmetry breaking. And symmetry breaking is essentially what happens when infinitesimally small changes are able to affect the fate of a system when that system is at a critical point. But so far this space-time crystal has not been able to be made, but it's thought and hoped that in the future it will be done. And finally, a new early detection system for detecting possible asteroid threats, and this is due to the planned launch of a new satellite called Sentinel, which will be going into orbit around the sun. And this is the first privately funded deep space mission, because this is not being done by any of the governments, this is done by a private organisation. And it's expected that Sentinel will be ready for launch on SpaceX's Falcon 9 in five or six years. It's expected that this satellite will be able to predict where asteroids in orbit will be in 50 to 100 years from now, allowing us to see if there are any major threats to our planet. That's all for now and thanks for watching. I'm sorry I didn't get a video up sooner, but thanks for watching. I'm planning on doing a what is later this weekend. I will see you next time.